This video is part of Firm Theory Cost. In it, I will discuss expansion paths and their relationship to long-run total cost curves. An expansion path traces out a firm's cost-minimizing combination of inputs as it expands or increases its level of production. Let me show you. Imagine the firm is initially producing 100 units of output at the lowest possible cost by employing 50 workers per hour and 100 units of capital per hour. The cost of this input bundle is $2,000. $2,000 is the minimum cost of producing 100 units of output. Now imagine the firm wants to expand its output or increase its output from 100 to 150 units. As shown on the graph, the new cost minimizing bundle of inputs is bundle Y, at which point the firm employs 75 workers per hour and 150 units of capital per hour. The cost of this bundle of inputs is $3,000. $3,000 is the minimum cost of producing 150 units of output. One more time, imagine the firm now wants to expand its output to 200 units. Bundle Z represents the minimum cost bundle of producing 200 units. And at this point, the firm's using 100 workers per hour and 200 units of capital per hour, the cost of which is $4,000. So $4,000 is the minimum cost of producing an output level of $200. What an expansion path does is it connects all of these bundles or any other bundle for any other level of output, and in doing so, traces out all the cost minimizing bundles of inputs that produce any level of output. Before we move forward, let's consider what is the same and what is different about bundles X, Y, and Z. What things are changing? Well, first we see that output is changing. I mean, that's the heart of the expansion path. The expansion path is looking at what happens as output expands. So from X to Y to Z, output is increasing or changing. From X, Y, and Z, the input bundle is also changing. As the firm expands its output in the long run, it's going to expand its use of both inputs. So the input levels are changing from X to Y to Z. As the input bundles change, so does the cost. From X to Y to Z, the cost of the input bundles is also increasing. What's staying the same? Well, notice that all the ISO cost lines have the same slope. So what's staying the same is the input prices. The input price ratio is the same, which is why ISO cost lines are parallel. Now let me show you how, given an expansion path, we can construct a long-run cost curve. A long-run cost curve is going to show the relationship between the minimum cost and each level of output. This connection between an expansion path and long-run cost curve is a lot like a connection we saw in consumer theory. So let me remind you of that first. In consumer theory, we learned about income consumption curves and angle curves. An income consumption curve traces out the utility maximizing bundles of two goods as income increases. So what we see on this graph is as income increases, the budget line shifts out and as the budget line shifts out, the consumer's utility maximizing choices of goods X and Y change. So an income consumption curve shows what happens to both goods X and Y as income increases. An angle curve, on the other hand, shows only what happens to one good, here X, as income changes. An angle curve therefore plots some of the information that an income consumption curve communicates. Here we see that when income is I1, the consumer chooses X1 units of X. So an angle curve matches up income one with X1 units of X. 
I'll show you one more time. When income is I2, the income consumption curve shows not only what happens to Y, but what happens to X. And here, when I is I2, X is X2. So the angle curve connects X2 units of X with I2 dollars of income. Hopefully now you can see that an expansion path is a lot like an income consumption curve. However, with an expansion path, what's driving the change is an increase or an expansion in output. And here we're tracing out the cost minimizing bundles of inputs. The long run cost curve, like the angle curve, is going to take some information from the expansion path and graph it on a new graph. Notice first the axes of this new graph. On the x-axis, we're gonna have units of the good, so that's the quantity of output, we can call that Q here. And on the y-axis, we're gonna have dollars, or the long-run cost values. For example, we see that on the expansion path, when output is 100, the minimum cost is 2,000. So when output is 100, the long run total cost curve shows the minimum cost of $2,000. According to the expansion path, when output is 150 units, the minimum cost is 3,000. So the long run total cost curve matches up an output of 150 with a minimum cost of 3,000. According to the expansion path, when output is 200, the minimum cost is 4,000. The long run total cost therefore matches up when output is 200, the minimum cost is 4,000. Again, the long run total cost curve is plotting some of the information that the expansion path shows. Specifically, the long run total cost shows the relationship between every level of output and the lowest possible cost.